In today's video, I'm gonna answer a question that I get all the time. What's the difference between high-speed sync and TTL? If you're looking at the literature on a Sony flash like the 45 or the 60RM, you'll notice that they both offer HSS and TTL. And oftentimes people are confused as to what those terms actually mean and what they can do to help you take better pictures. Today, I wanna to give you a crash course into what these technologies do so you can know which one to use based on the shooting situation that you actually find yourself in. We'll start first with HSS, which is short for High Speed Sync. This is a feature that addresses a limitation in flash photography that you'll no doubt run into at some point when you use a flash. Pretty much every camera that you can think of has a maximum shutter speed where the camera and the flash can actually sync together to make a complete exposure. For most Sony cameras, it ranges anywhere from 1 1 60th of a second to 1 400th of a second. Where you're using a flash and attempt to exceed those shutter speeds, you'll end up seeing some or all of the shutter curtain within your photo. That's because the shutter curtain moves so fast that the flash isn't able to illuminate the entirety of the sensor. And depending on how fast your shutter speed is, you may not actually get any light onto the sensor at all. With that in mind, high speed sync is a feature that allows you to shoot at shutter speeds above your typical flash sync speed limits, hence the name high speed sync. When you enable that feature on your flash, you're then able to choose, let's say, one two thousandth or even higher of a second for your shutter speed and still have an image that is properly illuminated by your flash. You might be wondering how exactly does that work? It's kind of brilliant actually. Normally when you're within your normal sync speed limits, your flash will only give you a single pop of light from your flash, which as we talked about, lights up the entire sensor. When you're in high speed sync, however, the flash will actually fire multiple times, almost like a stroboscopic effect, so that as the shutter curtain opens and closes, the sensor is being peppered with light. It's a really novel way to overcome the limitations of syncing your flash with your camera. High speed sync does have some disadvantages that you'll want to be aware of. The first being that you'll end up losing up to about a stop of light output. Also, because the flash is firing off multiple times to properly expose your image, it's going to wear out your batteries much faster than when you're shooting within the flash sync limits. So that's high speed sync in a nutshell, but let's take a look at TTL, which is short for through the lens. When you're using a standard flash that doesn't have TTL, you end up having to manually adjust the flash power to illuminate your subject or your scene. Setting your flash to TTL allows the flash to measure the light from the subject that is reflected through the lens, which is why it's commonly known as through the lens metering. When this happens, your flash will automatically set the appropriate flash output based on those calculations and light up your subject or your scene. An easy way to think of TTL is likening it to an automatic flash. It calculates how much light is needed and then it takes care of the light output from there. TTL, just like any other automatic settings on a camera, usually works pretty well, but sometimes it doesn't give you the perfect amount of light. At times you'll notice that the flash output might be too much or too little to light your subject or your scene based on your specific artistic tastes. That's where flash exposure compensation comes into the picture. If you're noticing that TTL is either over or underexposing your image, you could go into your camera and tell it to adjust whatever the amount of light that it's calculating and either increase it or decrease it by a certain number of stops, all of which you could set manually in your camera. TTL really comes in handy for wedding and event photographers who might be dealing with a variety of lighting conditions and they don't wanna go manually adjusting their flash power to try to keep up with everything that's going on. High speed sync and through the lens metering can be used either individually or combined to help capture the images that you want quick and easy. Hopefully you understand the differences now and you'll have a better idea of when you'll need to use these features. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. And while you're there, don't forget to leave a like on this video if you found 
this information helpful, and of course, subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. So if you wanna learn more about flash photography, check out one of the videos that you see here on the screen. I'll see you there.